Okay, so now that we've talked, spoken about the inspector tool, I'm going to tell you a little bit about face groups. Face groups are just a way of grouping clusters of uh, triangles that are touching each other such that when you double click one of them, you double click all of them. That's useful if you want to do an operation to all of them at once or you want to sort of select them one after another. Uh, but as you'll notice, if I, sorry, if I use the selection tool, right, that allows me to click on certain triangles in particular, depending on the size of my selection tool. Let's say I wanted to toggle it. You can see that I use correspondingly opposing brackets to change the size of my selection tool with the open bracket, sorry, with the closed bracket making my tool larger and with the closed bracket making my tool smaller. You can also toggle it over here, but as you can imagine, this gets sort of cumbersome as you're using the software. So I just use hotkeys. Okay, so back to face groups. Let's escape out to exit the uh, selection that we had. Let's say I wanted to select this entire body. Well, if I double click the mesh, then it'll select everything but the existing face groups. Vice versa, if I exit out of that selection and I just double click inside of the face group, it'll only give me the face group. So this is somewhat intuitive, um, right? The face groups are just a different, it's whenever you sort of expand your selection by double clicking, they don't include, they're not included unless they were originally included. Now let's say I wanted to select multiple face groups. Well, if I double click this one, I double click that one, that's totally fine. And you can see that I can select multiple things. Now let's say I wanted to do something crazy. Let's say extrude. Now you might expect that the um, hotkey for that is E. In fact, it is D. I don't know why, but it is. And so I can change the offset. And you see that it, it's sort of set to being a, a constant direction. Let's say I wanted to say it was normal to the surface where it's coming out of. I can do some sort of funky things over there. It's generating this new mesh. Now you'll notice if you make a mistake, right? If you sort of, if you're not careful, you can see that the inside of this bunny is in fact sticking out. So whenever you start seeing pink like that, that's not actually a different face group. Let's center it over here. Uh, that's not actually a different face group. It's, uh, you messed up. So you don't want to go that far. Uh, so I'm going to undo it. Maybe I, ch instead of being normal, I make it constant and you'll see, oh, looks like this works. Um, I don't get any pink. Okay, so you'll also notice that not only can I extrude outwards, I can also extrude inwards. Classic Autodesk. Um, and so I can make these little guys sort of go in and out. And you might say, hey, Saul, that's great. However, I want my selections to be perfectly circular. I hear you. Okay, let's say you have these face groups and uh, let's say you had some selection and you wanted to make it circular, right? Because it's all fine and well that you can sort of sort of roughly select these different regions, but you want them to look really smooth. Well, that's where the boundary tool comes in. That's with the letter B. So you click B and you have these bunch of options to create a smooth boundary. If you want to increase the smoothness, you can sort of, you can sort of play with these things. Um, I don't really know exactly what they do. All I know is that I play with them until it sort of works, right? You can include border rings. That makes your selection larger. Usually I just make smoothness pretty high. Um, I hit accept. And so now what was before sort of this jagged selection, let's see if I can go back and see it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what was before a jagged selection is now a pretty smooth boundary. So that can be useful. It's good to know exists. And so now when I go in or out with my extrusion with D, right, you see that it looks a lot nicer. Great. Okay. So you say that's great salt, but you know, I actually want to smooth out this boundary. Well, let's show you how first things first. Uh, it's looking kind of messy in terms of face groups, so I'm going to show you how to clear all the face groups. We're going to use Control A to select every single part of the mesh. Then we're going to use Control Shift G to clear the face groups. Let's say you wanted to make it all one face group, or let's say you wanted to sort of select this area, maybe make it a nice boundary, and then make it a face group. You could do uh, uh, Control G, and that makes it a face group. All of these can also be found somewhere in here. I don't use them because it takes too long, and you shouldn't either. So, great. So you can make a face group. Let's say you wanted to get rid of the face group. I could just undo it, right? Or alternatively, let's see. I already ex let's see. I, alternatively, I can just select the whole thing, Control Shift G, and I've removed the face group. You'll notice that I've actually altered the mesh, but I actually haven't altered the bunny. So I'm toggling W. So you can see that the mesh is actually different, but the or the the vertices are different, but the mesh itself is not. So that's something to notice. 
Great, okay, so let's say you want to smooth out this bunny. Also, it looks like the view is sort of weird. I want to see my mesh. Great. So you can sort of toggle those different things here. Let's say you want to see colors when you're like drawing on it, which we will not be covering. Um, you would do that here, you toggle that. But I just want to see sort of the, the facets instead of it just being smoothed out. Oh, I didn't know V did that. Oh, learn something new every day. Looks like if you click V, it'll take you to a home view. That's good to know. Okay, so let's talk about smoothing. I'm going to go into the Sculpt tool. This is one of the few times that I'll go over into this menu. And then I'll select one of my favorite brushes with just robust smooth. So this is really important to see wireframe when you do this. So I can sort of go over here and I'm sort of smoothing it out. And you're saying, Saul, I can't really tell what's going on. So I'm going to rotate it for you. No problems. Okay. So you can see over here if I toggle the wireframe, what was before sort of this very defined edge, right? Super sharp. I can sort of go into robust smooth. Whoop. Go into Robust Smooth, and I can sort of reduce that down. Great. Um, you can also change the strength of Robust Smooth. The way that you do that is with uh, this little slider. If you want to change the size of the area affected, you can do that similarly with the Selection tool, and you can sort of smooth things out. Now this is a bunny with no face. It belongs on Game of Thrones. You'll notice that Robust Smooth is really good at just eliminating features. So I think if I kept doing this, it would just become a sphere. Uh, and you can you can change a number of properties about Robust Smooth in terms of refinement. Refinement means that as you sort of change, um, as you sort of use Robust Smooth, it also removes a number of triangles. So if I do refinement super low, then when I use Robust Smooth, you'll notice that the density of polygons has gone down, and that actually has an outsized impact on the quality of the mesh. You want refinement to go up, that means that when you use Robust Smooth um, and reduce to go down, Ooh, it's not working. Ah, okay, well, in general, oh, yeah, sorry, I have to make the tool smaller. Now you see that when I use Robust Smooth, I'm actually adding triangles. So this is important to note. If I increase reduce and I reduce refine, you'll notice that all I'm really doing here, it, well, in addition to smoothing, I'm also like reducing the number of triangles. So depending on your application, Robust Smooth, uh, uh, you can sort of change the parameters of Robust Smooth, and it's a very, very, very versatile tool. I'd say the most versatile tool for smoothing or any kind of mesh manipulation. Great, and so that's, uh, that's a few things, and that's the end of this video. Great, so that's a few things, and that's the end of this video.